Welcome to the eCQM Fire Sparks. This is the first installment in a series of video shorts that, that will introduce Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, or FIRE, an interoperability standard created by the Standards Development Organization Health Level 7. This series is presented by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It is intended to support healthcare quality leaders, health IT vendors, and measure developers begin to explore the use of FIRE for quality measurement. We hope this series sparks your interest and engagement in this emerging area of interoperability. In this segment, we'll define FIRE and describe work among the HL7 standards community to apply FIRE to quality measurement. What is FIRE? FIRE is an international standard that is intended to facilitate interoperability between disparate systems. FIRE describes data formats for clinical and administrative healthcare data, known as resources. FIRE also describes methods for exchanging electronic data through modern web-based application programming interfaces, or APIs. FIRE builds on previous data format standards from HL7 that have been used in information exchange, like HL7 version 2, commonly used for transmitting ADT and other messages between providers. A core goal of FIRE was to create a standard that could be adopted across multiple health IT platforms to make real-time interoperability easier. By adopting existing standards and concepts already familiar to developers outside of healthcare, FIRE reduces the learning curve, makes interoperability easier, and enables faster and simpler application creation. To understand this better, let's take a closer look at resources and profiles. In FIRE, healthcare data is broken down into categories like patients, lab results, and encounters. Each of these categories is further defined within a FIRE resource, which includes the data elements, terminology, and other constraints that together make up an exchangeable element of a patient record. FIRE resources are intended to be discrete enough to allow meaningful exchange and universal enough to be widely accepted and supported by multiple health IT applications. FIRE resources also designed to be easily understood by technical experts and non-technical people alike. Let's take a closer look at the patient resource. To do so, we'll visit the HL7 FIRE Release 4 website and open the patient resource. At the top of the page, you'll see HL7 provides a narrative description of the scope and use of the patient resource. This resource is focused on describing the demographic information necessary to support administrative, financial, and clinical procedures. Under resource content, you'll see a description of the elements included within the patient resource. This may look technical, but with a little practice, it's not too difficult to interpret. Let's briefly walk through how information is presented within a resource. Starting on the left, you see a tree structure. Each item in the tree is an element of the patient resource. Each item in the tree is further defined by the columns to the right of the element name. For example, the patient resource includes an element of birth date. To the right of birth date, the icon in the flag column presents a form of HL7 notation that provides direction to implementers on how to handle the element. In this case, it indicates that birth date is included in summary data when the patient resource is exchanged. Card or cardinality field provides lower and upper bounds for how often the element is allowed to appear. For birth date, this field indicates that there can be zero to one and no greater than one date of birth for a given patient. Next, the type field further verifies the type of data contained in the data element. Birth date is noted to be a date. Finally, a brief description explains the element in plain language. You can see that there are multiple elements like the birth date element within the patient resource. FIRE defines each element discreetly to support retained meaning when data is exchanged. By defining these elements, FIRE is not assuming they are all present in every record or that they are all exchanged in each exchange of patient information. Rather, the definitions within the resource enable organizations involved to align how they store and exchange patient information so it can easily be understood and used by those sending and receiving data from disparate systems without additional effort. Next, let's talk about profiles. 
Remember, resources provide the building blocks and common definitions for how clinical data should be structured and exchanged. They are designed to be general, and as FHIR is an international standard, resources support a broad range of uses. When data is to be exchanged for a specific use, such as quality measures, resources often need to be further defined or extended to include the specific elements and definitions needed for that use case. In these situations, HL7 stakeholders create what's called a profile. Profile is nothing more than a resource that has been changed in order to meet that specific use case. Profiles enable us to clarify specific terminology to be used or which elements are required for exchange in that use case. Let's think back to the patient resource example. Can you think of a constraint that might be necessary to use a birth date in quality measurement? There is one. A person's age often determines whether they are eligible for the clinical action indicated in a quality measure, which is a breast cancer screening or an influenza immunization. Because birth date is used to calculate age for the purpose of measurement, birth date is a required element. There may be other data exchange scenarios where age is nice to have, but not required. Birth date is one example of an element on the patient resource that must be profiled for the purpose of quality measurement. Birth date element is just one example of the unique constraints that apply to quality measurement that may not apply to other data exchange scenarios. When constraints exist, profiles are created. And when multiple profiles are created to support a use case, these profiles are published as an implementation guide. Quality measurement, the QI core or quality improvement core implementation guide, defines the profiles needed to create interoperable quality focused applications. QI Core is just one of several implementation guides that support quality measurement. Collectively, this set of guides is referred to as the Clinical Reasoning Module. Now you have a basic understanding of how FHIR is used to provide data definitions. Resources provide the basic building blocks for data exchange. Profiles layer in context for data exchange in specific use cases. Implementation guides are collections of profiles and other context-specific information and enable exchange and clinical reasoning is a set of FHIR implementation guides that support quality measurement and improvement. In our next short, we'll take a closer look at the additional guides in the clinical reasoning module, and specifically how these FHIR implementation guides can support electronic clinical measurements.